Energy up, Ooh, yeah. Hey everybody, Phil here from Gen Tea. Today I'm gonna to be brewing and tasting Jen's all-time favorite tea and my favorite Teguanyin, Teguanyin Classic. So grab yourself a tea and a teapot and brew along and let's get started. Before we start brewing, let's take a quick look at the leaf. First, you'll probably notice that I have quite an amount of leaf here. The reason for that is I have a fairly large gaiwan this morning and we just love this tea, so we plan on drinking quite an amount of it. The next thing I want to point out is the, the deep brown, the lustrous, silky brown color of the tea. This tea is really perfectly roasted, which is really going to come into play as we taste the tea. So let's not hesitate and let's get to it. You probably also noticed that the leaf shape is quite different than your typical Taiguanyin, being more straight like a Densong or a or a rock tea. That is why we call this Taiguanyin Classic. It's actually made using the style before the 90s. I really love warming up the teaware first because it gives me a chance to really enjoy the leaf aroma. And this tea, you do not want to miss that. It is really wonderful. We talked about that roastiness when we looked at the leaf color. So you've got sort of a sweet baking cookie, uh, a little bit buttery, some hints of chocolate. I mean, this is, don't skip this step, folks. This is a really lovely aroma. Uh, a little bit, little hints of floral orchid floating. Not too high though. They're kind of down. They're roasted right into the tea. Let's get rolling. It's also important to brew this tea with boiling water. You're going to need boiling water to really pull out that beautiful, roasty, thick, rich mouth feel. Just look at that beautiful gold liquor color, clear and bright. A wonderful mixture of orchid with that roasty, almost like a baking shortbread smell, the smell you would get in the kitchen. While those cookies are baking, that's that roasting coming through. It's not a smoky roast, it's more of a sweet roast that infuses all the flavors together. And the orchid, light floral, very much in the mouth. It's not a really heady aromatic. It's got a nice aroma, but not overpowering. Really thick mouthfeel. Mm. Mm. The orchid really pops when I breathe. I hold the liquor in my mouth and while I breathe in the orchid, that, those floral scents really pop and are really delightful. And while I'm holding the liquor in my mouth, I'm also picking up that thick, rich, almost brothy, but not umami, but that thick, rich texture of the liquor. Just wonderful. The second infusion, the liquor's a little bit deeper, a little bit more to the amber side of that bright gold we saw. Still has a great buttery aroma. Mm. And a creamy mouthfeel, almost like a roasted chestnut sort of feel in the mouth with that minor sweet that you also get from a roasted chestnut, but on top with that orchid fragrance blending in. Mm. And a thickness that that coats the whole throat and leaves the mouth completely refreshed. At the aftertaste is sort of reverberating in my mouth. I've still got those, those um, sweet cookie flavors and a little bit of that creamy chestnut, but clean, clean, clean. There's another flavor hiding underneath. I can't, can't quite put a name on it. Let me work on it. It's almost like a hint of dark wild berry. The dark flavor you get from wild berry mixed with that baking sweetness, 
I don't know, it's really hard to describe. Mm. Another deep gold amber liquor from the third infusion. Wonderful orchid notes still on the on the uh, liquor aroma. Oh wow, the uh, almost like a caramelized sugar with butter. It's got a creamy buttery texture with orchid laid on top. Mm. And as I breathe over it after the swallow, that flavor lingers in the mouth. Even between infusions, I noticed while I was brewing, I still had that lingering flavor of sort of, I don't know, roasty orchid. It sounds so weird, but it was just this wonderful, clean freshness in my mouth. Oh, wonderful. All right, we're here at the sixth infusion. You can see the liquor colors getting a little bit lighter, but there's still plenty of life in this tea. The floral notes are becoming more meadowy and a uh, little bit lighter than the first couple infusions. Mm. Still a wonderful sip. The, the, the way this tea is transforming through the infusions is just divine. The floral notes have transformed into that lighter, more meadowy, almost like, like, like cute little meadow flowers instead of those orchids that I was describing in the early infusions. The creaminess is still there and the, the feel in the mouth is still clean and fresh. Not a hint of astringency with this mouthfeel. It's just, it's just bright and refreshing. Oh, I'm getting some of those uh, same meadowy flowers on the lid as well. Just divine. We're going to wrap up the video here at the sixth infusion, but we're definitely going to get 11 or 12 great infusions out of this tea. Be sure to check out the website. We've got complete notes about the origin of the tea, all the brewing instructions, and all my tasting notes are there. And if you've tried the tea, please leave us your tasting notes in the comments section on the website. Until next time, keep steeping.